Hey everyone, Jordan here. Today we're going to be taking a look at our first X870 chipset motherboard from AMD. We have got the Aorus Elite Wi-Fi 7 here, very kindly sent over by Gigabyte. Now I will preface this video by saying this is going to be one of my usual unboxing and overviews. Build and performance stuff will have to wait for a little while. I'm not even sure if I can tell you when that is, so I'm going to say soon, TM. Um, but get subscribed and do the bow so you when that goes live. But for now, we can take a look at the motherboard, and I've been really looking forward to doing this, so uh, let's get it open. So I've just got the Z790 box here, just so we can have a look at the boxes. A lot more vibrant on the new ones, and uh, certainly looks more appealing. We'll certainly stand out on a shelf as well. So let's get this open, we'll have a look at the accessories first, and then we'll get onto the board. So in this bit, nothing in there. So underneath, we've got some accessories, a little multilingual installation guide, bit of warranty information. We've got a case badge, we've got our Wi-Fi antennas, I will keep this out to show you in a second. And some SATA cables, one of which is right angled. And that's it, so no additional screws or anything for the NVMEs as they use the quick latches. So very basic in terms of accessories. So my first look at this, oh, it's very stealthy. Already making me think matte black, maybe be quiet, stealthy kind of colors. Well, that would work very well. Kind of like a texture design on the vrm there pretty chonky actually speaking of vrms with the chokes of mosfets and things it's got a digital twin 16 plus 2 plus 2 phase vrm so this will support 7000 8000 and 9000 series processors of course on the am5 platform retaining this for a number of years which is always good for upgradeability in the future but you will have some limitations with the 8000 series in this board. You won't be able to use the Gen 5 NVMe or PCIe, so just something to bear in mind, but that's a limitation from the chip, not the board. A little bit of a design on the back of the motherboard, but nothing too crazy. I actually prefer that we don't see anything mad on the back because you're never going to see it when it's in the case anyway, so I think it's good that they haven't spent a lot of money there. Just got a quick glimpse at the rear I.O. It looks really stacked, but of course we'll go around the board first. We've got two A-pin EPS connectors on the top left. On the right, we've got a CPU optional and a CPU fan, so two four pin headers. There's a power and a reset button, very handy things to have on a motherboard, especially with bench testing. We've got a standard 12 volt RGB header, then a five volt addressable three pin below that. Nice little digital screen there for readout and postcodes and things like that. We've got our usual 24 pin for power. There's a built in HDMI. This is perfect if you're going to use a little screen in your case you want to have some stats. That's what that's there for. You're going to see that on quite a lot of boards, I think, this year. Down below, we've got a USB C port. This is USB 3.2 Gen 2x2, so 20 gigabits per second. There's a little button there for a quick release for our PCIe lock. We'll cover those more in a minute. On the right angle, we have got four SATA ports. These are 6 gigabits per second. Then we've got our USB 3 header. This will be USB 3.2 Gen 1. We've got our battery on the bottom right of the board of course with our front panel and we've got three four pin headers two of those are for your pumps and then we've got some usb2 headers so great for anything that uses controllers rgb controllers and things like that can plug into there and we've got another three four pin headers that gives you a total of eight four pin headers on this board we've got two more addressable rgb connectors there so three pins so you can do loads of rgb on this board and then on the bottom left we have got the front panel audio now for anyone wondering this is using a realtek alc 1220 codec so now let's go back up to the top of the board of course our socket am5 then on the right we have got support for up to 256 gigabytes of ddr5 that will support expo up to 8000 megahertz you can of course push it if you want to go manual so let's look at our nvme and then pcie slots the top one for storage is the gen 5 slot we have got a quick release latch on there that then comes off and reveals a big old thermal pad so you can support up to 110 mil drive and a gen 5 drive as well pretty decent piece of metal so that should dissipate a nice lot of heat there's also plastic on both thermal pads so make sure you take that off before you install the drive we've also got another quick release for some additional slots further down take that off we've got three more slots here yeah, they're actually labeled as well so the bottom two are gen 5 and then the one at the top is gen 4. again all of these can be up to 110 mil so nice lot of options there for some fast storage you can make this into a great editing pc actually with all the gen 5 storage so now pcie slots the top one this is a gen 5 slot armored very thick has also got a quick release like i mentioned earlier that will support gen 5 graphics cards when they're available then the lanes at the bottom of the board are going to be Gen 4, but you can, of course, use those for capture cards, sound cards, and things like that. So let's take a look at the rear I.O. We've got lots of things going on here. First of all, at the top, we've got a Q flash button. Very handy thing to have. You can upgrade your BIOS button needing a CPU. So if you get one that's newer than the BIOS revision, you don't have to worry. You can just easily update it there. Next, we've got where we're going to connect our antennas for our Wi-Fi. So it's just a push in and then connect. Very easy to do. That's also magnetic on there as well. 
but I like that it's so much simpler as well. You don't have to do any fiddly little rotations with the little screw threads. It just literally pushes on and then pulls off. We've got four black USB ports. These are USB 2. There's a display port there if you want to do any troubleshooting with the CPU that's got onboard graphics. The blue USB ports, these are USB 3.2 Gen 1. We've got the red ones are USB 3.2 Gen 2. There's two and a half gig LAN. We've got some audio options on the bottom there. SB diff, microphone, and a line out. So last but not least, we have got the two USB 4 Type-C ports. These will support DisplayPort video outputs with a maximum resolution of 4K, so 3840 by 2160 at 240 Hz. Now, USB 4 is actually going to be mandatory on all of the X870 chipset motherboards, so you're going to see this on all of them for the next gen. But you did see them on a couple of the X670. I think the Crosshair Hero had the USB 4, but certainly going to be a lot more common for this next gen of boards, that's for sure. So that was a look around the Aorus Elite Wi-Fi 7. Let me know what you think about it in the comments box below. Like I said, a little bit of a preview, but I thought you guys might like to see the new boards before we get uh, performance and stuff uh, and put them into builds. No pricing at this time either, so it's a bit speculative. Um, being that it's got Wi-Fi 7 and obviously USB 4, I feel that it's going to be a higher price point uh, than the the X670 came in at, but we'll of course wait and find out. And I'll talk to you more about that when I can use it in builds and things. Um, hopefully we'll have some other previews coming up soon as well. So get subscribed and ding the bell. Should have quite a few variants coming in to check out and I'll be uploading these pretty um, instantly. Well, not instantly, but I'll be doing them as fast as I can once they start to turn up. So yeah, definitely get subscribed because there's gonna be a lot of content coming on the way. I've got other stuff in the works as well. I've got another case review, just finishing that up. So that should be um, coming up soon as well, if not tomorrow. So it's gonna be hectic, but uh, lots to enjoy and look forward to. So let me know what you think about this board. I will put the links for it in the description box when it's available. Thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Anything else you wanna know, of course, leave a comment. Thank you to Oris for sending it out for me to look at, and I'll see you all in the next one.